Hello there my friends, some long time no see, welcome to my uh, another video after entire summer of not uploading I suppose um, some of you might be wondering why I haven't been uploading, it's because I kind of just lost all inspiration to do videos which is kind of stupid because I'm really low on the subscriber count so I don't know why that happened, anyway there is a lot of stuff that's been going on. I've been trying to learn new techniques that I can teach you and well today we are going to get back into the modeling and we are gonna do it with this little tiny tank right here. This is a T72M2 Moderna in 1 to 100 scale. Now you might remember I did a scratch built one uh, last year or well around that time where I used a model collect model and I um, just updetailed it using styrene but this, this little model right here is completely 3D modeled by me in Tinkercad it was painful but I did it and I got it 3D printed by my boyfriend and now it's here and I'm really really proud of how it turned out I really want to share it with you because it's you know just an important model to me and I will let you know about a lot of things during this video and what will change, stuff like that. So uh, stick around and let's get right into uh, building this tiny model. So the first thing as in ordinary model is to remove the parts from the supports. Now compared to the ordinary model with resin prints it's usually harder unless you make the supports really thin because on this model particularly it can differ from model to a model they're really thick and quite hard to remove so you have to be really uh, careful and preferably use uh, really sharp snippers and also scalpel scalpel can then also be used to remove all of the remaining pips that uh, stayed on the surface from removing because you know you didn't remove them properly or you didn't want to break something but I just have to recommend being really careful and it's better to keep the pip on the model and then remove it uh, when the part is completely off than trying to remove it perfectly right away. Now for gluing the parts together I use ordinary super glue, this is some cheap super glue from a random Slovak market and it's just used to uh, make these sub assemblies that will be easier to paint, mainly adding the side skirts to the hull. I made the tracks so they can um, nicely dry fit to the lower hole. They do that uh, quite well, which I am pretty happy with, but I don't glue them on just yet for easier painting later. I just put them on right now to see how they fit and then I snap the lower hole to the upper hole because I somehow managed to make them snap fitable. Which I the turret of the Moderna has some uh, cope cages on it. You might have noticed this in photos or in War Thunder. Um, unfortunately, the ones that I added to the model got broken while I was cleaning the parts because they were really, really thin since I tried to make them in scale. And of course, in the future, I'll try to not break them, but who knows when I will build another one of these. So I just replaced them with uh, some PE parts that I just cut up and added. Here you can see the model entirely uh, built together and assembled, so now it's time to disassemble it again and start. I start by simple black primer on the entire model so everything can have one nice uniform color that all of the other colors can then stick to. Now, usually it's better to have a normal uh, primer that you purchase from a model store, but since I don't have one, I only used a basic Vallejo black color 
I think it worked pretty well. The main point why I do this is just so the additional colors that I actually want the model to uh, have visible will stick to paint, not to base resin that has tendency to not hold paint all that well. At least from my experience. Then I started painting the first layer of the free tone camouflage that I decided to go with. I use Russian uniform green for this again from Viejo. I thin down the paint with water and then I apply it in several very thin coats all around the vehicle so it creates a nice uniform layer that looks airbrushed. I decided to go with the Finnish summer camouflage that you can find Modernas in Vortander sometimes using because I really like how it looks. So sorry for the inaccuracy but yeah it's for the cooler good. Now what I've been learning this entire summer is trying to post shade my models. Now I am not the best at it still because I mean it's quite hard to post shade models with a brush but I'm trying to come up with techniques and I think I've gotten it somewhat nice so far so what I do here is I uh, wet the surface with some water and then I dab it with um, diluted paint that I then again blend this should in theory create a nice blended and highlighted effect that looks as if you were post shading the model with a airbrush. It's not perfect yet but I'm trying my best to perfect it. If you have any techniques that you would like to share to make this even better please share them in the comments. I would like to get you know have my models better and better and teach people how to do this. I post shade with continuously lighter colors until I am happy with the contrast. On this particular model I just went with two colors that were each lighter than the previous one and then I moved on to a light dry brush. Then using the lightest paint I again painted all of the raised areas like uh, some knobs or some uh, connection points and stuff like that just to keep even a higher contrast and I think it looks pretty nicely post shaded as it is. However, this camouflage has more paints, so let's paint the other tone of the camo. For this part of the camouflage I used again Russian uniform mixed in with some black. There are better colors for this um, Finnish camouflage, I just didn't have them at hand so I used these ones. I paint the pattern in more or less very blocky and random pattern using uh, Vortander as reference and also some real life pictures because of course um, Finns did have a T72 M1 that did get painted this way. For this uh, layer of camouflage I needed two thin coats. Then I do the same thing as with the base color, I mix in a lighter version of the color I used for the pattern and then I blend, dab it onto uh, highlighted areas and I blend it with water. It's basically like a thicker wash made out of acrylic colors, which I am quite used to because all the washes I use are also acrylic. Then for the third pattern of the camouflage I use ordinary black, again making some blocky shapes of the pattern and then highlighting them with lighter grey color until I am happy with the result.
Now black color has very good coverage, so this doesn't need two layers, only one. Then I highlight all of the raised areas again with light green. I actually used light gray for the black areas, but um, color contrast just made it look like green as well, so it looks like everything is highlighted with green in the videos. Then I use various different shades and colors to paint those tiny little details. For example, I use buff for stuff like uh, mantlet covers. The 30 mil was painted with German grey. Here you can see me adding some super glue to the um, Commander's Optic lenses. This creates a na nice glossy finish that looks like glass on the lens and I really like the effect. Then I start applying the washes. I decided to go with uh, Viejo Grey Wash. I applied around the details, let it dry for a little, little bit and then I blend it with ordinary water as it is an acrylic wash. This is one of the techniques that transforms your model completely. While I'm here applying the wash, I wanted to say that throughout the summer I've been uh, printing and trying to model a lot of models, that's why I didn't really uh, make videos, because I was trying new techniques, and there is a lot of printable stuff coming to my channel, and also normal models as well that I think will be better than anything I've done before this. So you have a lot of stuff to be excited for, I have a lot of plans, so stick around on my channel and I think you're gonna really enjoy what I'm planning next. As you can see, it completely transformed the model, it made it nicely sharper and therefore looks somewhat more realistic. So I went in with chipping, I use again lighter green color and I applied it with this art sponge that I uh, found, but you can use ordinary kitchen sponge or packaging sponge if you want. I unload the sponge on paper and then I just sparingly apply it across the model to create these tiny little chips that look nicely realistic. Now some modelers apply the chipping before the washes, but I don't like how the washes cover the chipping up, so I apply them, apply it after the washes. Then using my tiniest brush I enhance some of the chips, mostly the bigger ones and also some uh, edges, because edges would get the most chip. Then I fill some of the chipped areas with Viejo, uh, Panzer Aces, Dark Rust. This will create the effect of chipped color down to the metal. Nothing you would order ordinarily see on operational vehicles because they don't usually chip like this, but it's an artistic choice and I really like how it looks. Also, some vehicles do chip like this, they just have to be in, a, you know, in combat for really, really long. Then I started with the last effects of weathering. First, I apply Viejo Environment Acrylic FX, which is this mud paste with some tiny little strands of grass in it. And I apply it in some collected and cramped areas where mud would collect on the vehicle. I use the vehicles from Ukraine War for this, because they are a really good reference for this type of vehicles.
Then I went in for some dust effects. This time I used um, Deck 10 from Vallejo, which is a new color I bought specifically for this purpose because before I used to use a buff and it was quite dark and unrealistic. This color I use almost as a wash. I nicely diluted it. I dilute it down tremendously and then I put put it all around the details that I expect would get dusty. In crevices, on wheels, on tracks, on lower holes and on side skirts, of course. I layer this until I am happy with it, so I don't show the entire process because you might like it differently than I do, of course. Then I use Viejo Flat Brown again, that I dilute and I apply it around the details. I also use Buff for the muddy areas with strands of grass, just to pick them up a little bit more. I just layer a lot of muddy effects on the model because I really like how it looks. Last thing I do then is just some speckling and the model is done onto the pictures. So this tiny little model is finished, I am really happy with how it turned out and I think it deserves a tiny little diorama. Maybe it'll have a better chance on the model show if the diorama works out, so next week or maybe the week after, depends on how long it'll take me, probably next week I'll uh, show you how I made a little diorama for this model. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video, thank you very much for watching, I'll try releasing videos now that summer is ending and um, new school year is starting. Um, if you really like my content, you can consider becoming a Patreon or, or donating on a coffee. Um, you will have rewards there, um, STLs for these models. Uh, you will see all of, all, a lot of these models uh, coming forward, so that's, that will be on the Patreon if you would like to maybe download some. I'll see, I'll try releasing them monthly, but not all of them are tested yet, so yeah. Leave a comment down below what you would like to see me build, model, uh, diorama. I will maybe start painting Warhammer minis, but I don't want to promise that because I've only started now, so that's also a thing. So I will see you in the next video next week where I make a diorama for this little model. And up until then, have an excellent day, excellent week or even more, and I will um, see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.